people are our greatest asset. Uh, quality is a way of life, uh, and profit is the lifeblood of any business. Uh, and that ethos is deeply ingrained in the business. The discounters grow, the online grows, the we call it the independent farm shops and such like continue to grow. Uh, more people go direct to consumer. Uh, I, I think all of these trends will continue and will actually take more and more share. Uh, and I think the the legacy retail market will continue to be under significant pressure. I think people can ac access the consumer in alternative ways and speak to the consumer in an alternative way. So I, I, I see it as a, as a time of massive disruption uh, and out of massive disruption comes phenomenal opportunities for those who are entrepreneurial and who, who can respond. Do we remember feelings for much longer than we remember facts? This is a piece of research that's backed up by the BBC and you know a load of other areas that talk about. And when you think about a brand yourself, you remember how it makes you feel. So you remember Volvo's make you feel safe. You remember Nike makes you feel athletic and cool. You remember Apple makes you feel tech and stylish. You remember how they make you feel, make people feel something to elicit or generate some kind of emotion. You've got your idea but you don't just need to hit people in terms of their, you know, you don't just make to need to make them understand it. You need to make them feel something so that they'll remember what the brand's about. Because the most effective work always triggers emotion and all of Bennett and Fields' work or uh, research demonstrates that. Tension exists between short-term performance marketing and long-term brand building. And I think instinctively every business leader and probably every single one of you marketers in this room knows that strong brands deliver better business results. But marketing remains stubbornly focused on the short term. And in fact, 70% of the growth in advertising over the last 15 years in the UK has been driven by direct response advertising. And I guess the same is true of the Irish market. But we are beginning to see a swing back to brand. And you may have heard that one of the perhaps more vocal of those marketers was Adidas, who actually very publicly said towards the end of last year, and I use their words, that they were too obsessed with shiny things. And that, that's their terminology, that they had focused too much on activation and they had forgotten about longer term brand building. More and more brands starting to interrogate what is the optimal balance between investment in performance versus brand building? What does that look like in terms of my brand budgets? And some return to understanding what is the optimal balance for, for uh, uh, brands. So his first announcement he made back in the middle of March, that was the most watched TV programme in 10 years on Irish TV. That was shown across Virgin and shown across RTE. But now we'll go down as the most watched TV programme of the last 10 years. And the second announcement is not far off them stats. Think of the mantra of one of the most successful brands in the world, which is Coca-Cola. And their ambition, and they make, the, 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 they're not, secretive about this at all, their ambition is to have Coca-Cola never more than at arm's length of all consumers at all times. Now, it's impossible to fulfill that, but it's an interesting kind of a, uh, a challenge for everybody working on the brand. How do I get my brand physically within an arm's length of everybody, of everybody in the market? It's not just enough to have your brand within arm's length of every consumer, Brennan's, which is a very successful Irish brand. Uh, and they have very defined, unique identifying characteristics. The yellow and the, and the red on the pack, it's instantly recognizable. It's so recognizable, their pack design, that they can take risks with it. They can take the word Brennan's off and put other words in, like health or something like that. So it's, it's, but it's, it's entirely consistent it's very identifiable and it's unique to them. The only brand I can think of that can play around uh, with, their, um, with their, their logo like that is, is Nike. And they sometimes just have the swish, swoosh, and they don't even have the name and everybody knows what it is or they might put some other name in. Tone of voice is critical. Brennan's, again, that tone of voice that they have, today's bread today, consistent slogan in that Dublin accent, which is very consistent, and they, they can adjust their copy in, in their radio commercials and in other areas. 
It's not just enough to have your brand within arm's length of every consumer. That consumer must have a vivid image of your brand in their heads. And that's what he means by mental availability. And the way Sharp defines it is quite interesting. He uses the phrase unique identifying characteristics. The more unique identifying characteristics there are attached to your brand, the better. Now, what are they? Quite simple, your pack, the colors on the pack, the logo, a tone of voice that you use in your marketing communications, um, little stories that, 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 you know, consistent themes that you might have on social media. We exist to make chocolate free of slavery and child labour. Not just our chocolate, but all chocolate worldwide. So we say we're an impact company that makes chocolate. And it was called Tony's, because Tony was the name of the journalist, and Chocolate Only, because it's chocolate and it's Tony fighting the lonely battle uh, to rid the industry of, of inequality. But the first thing we want to do is we want to create awareness of the problems within the industry. So I wasn't aware of this before, 18 months ago, before coming to Tony's, I had a really superficial knowledge of issues in the cocoa industry. We want everyone to be aware of the issues, because only if people are aware can they make an informed choice. If chocolate lovers know the real story, then they will put pressure on their favorite brands to make a change. And then bigger countries, so this is the States, they like to do things a little bit bigger. We've got a chocolate truck there, so it's so big that actually we can't rely on people coming to us. So we take our story to, uh, to the US market. businessman Warren Buffett once said it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it if you think about that you'll do things differently and it's so true and a well handled crisis can actually be an opportunity for your organization to demonstrate its competence and to enhance its reputation so even though you mightn't have all of the facts what you need to do is to put out a holding statement so that you give a bit of comfort to people to know that you're on top of the situation. I, I, I think the answer is always with the consumer and with the customer. Understanding where your consumer is, understanding where your customer is going and pivoting your business accordingly is the, is the answer. We made the call in, in, in May that the world had changed um, and that consumer was likely to change. The eating at home piece, the cooking from scratch, the family meal time, easy meal preparation, the midday, the lunch at home versus lunch out. Um, there is very, very significant changes in, in people's pattern of life uh, that then kicks off significant changes in their eating habits that need to be understood. 